Sound speeds and welcome back to Mast Mics. Before we go and unmask the two microphones that are masked before me, let me tell you this. The videos in the Mast Mics series need to be watched in sequential order. So the number that is before this video right here, you need to have already watched it before this video will make sense. So start with that playlist right there at the very beginning and enjoy. You got to lead up to it a little bit, okay? So trust me on this, thank me later. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and get to the unmasking. This right here is a DPA 4017B, and this here is a Sennheiser MKH416. Both of them are short shotgun microphones that could very easily be found on the end of a boom pole working somewhere in the film industry. If I have two people talking in a scene outdoor, doors, these microphones, both of them would be very effective at pulling their dialogue out while rejecting some of the background undesired sounds. So both of these short shotgun microphones are going to be great in those circumstances. They are also microphones you can use to record your voice in most uh, more a more close, intimate environment like voiceover. The 416 is one that you've probably heard of many times before. Priced at about $1,000, this microphone here is one you commonly see mentioned in forms and amongst voiceover artists because it is one that you can oft often find in someone's microphone locker. It has a really good low-end uh, sound. You can get right up on the microphone and really hear that proximity effect if you want to. And it is very clean with a low noise floor. The DPA microphone right here before me is part of a modular microphone ser uh, system. By modular, I mean that the capsule on there is the 4017 capsule. You could unscrew that and put on another capsule like the 4018. In this case, though, is the 4017, which is a super cardioid shotgun pattern. It is on the B power supply, which is uh, it'll, it basically offers two switches for you to play with. You can either put a high shelf on, which adds a little bit more high end. So that way you can kind of really get crispness and it kind of is more in your face. A lot of infomercials and stuff like that do that. Or you could roll off the lows, those two switches right there on the DPA. But the price point on this one is about $1,800. Now, I do want to thank my friend Mike Filosa for loaning me this Sennheiser MKH 416. This one here is mine, but this one here is his, and it was on loan. Thank you so much, Mike, Mike, for sending this to me. I really appreciate this opportunity to compare these two microphones. So if you have a microphone that you would like to see me masked and t and compare to another microphone, then send me an email at soundspeeds at yahoo.com and let's talk about it. Get your listening ears on because we have two new mass mics before us that we're about to listen to. But before we listen to my story, let's start with a noise floor test. To help you compare these microphones, I thought I'd tell you a funny story that took place about 20 years ago. And it's funny now, looking back at it at the time, it was quite terrifying, and you'll understand why in a second. Sorry you may hear a couple of pops on these microphones, that's the nature of doing a microphone comparison without proper wind protection and having the microphones right in front of your mouth and not putting them in proper microphone position. Watch that video if you have any questions about what that is. So this happened about 20 years ago. I had been in a five-year-long relationship with my high school sweetheart, and it abruptly ended, I guess you could say, and I was a little bit still hung up on her. As a matter of fact, a few years later, a couple of years later, my friends would probably still tell you that I was hung up on her, and this was only about three and a half to four months later. Now, they were telling me to go into a rebound relationship. They felt it would help me. That's not what I felt I needed. I felt I just needed to isolate myself, be with my thoughts, and that was probably the worst thing I could do, even though I watched a lot of movies and played catch up on a lot of movies and TV shows, and that was kind of enjoyable, I guess you could say, to me at the time. But I also like 80s music and 70s. So I had always wanted to go to a club called Bell Bottoms, and I'm not much of a clubber. I don't really go to a lot of clubs. But I really wanted to try this one, and only because of the music. I wasn't trying to look to pick anybody up. That was not at all what I was in, interested in. As a matter of fact, coming out of this relationship, I still felt very much a commitment to her. So even though we had very much moved on and very abruptly, I was still scared to death of the fact of even talking to another girl. If there was any thought in my mind about her being great personality, sweet, attractive, anything like that. If any thought in my mind started to go into effect like, hey, you know, maybe she might be single, I would start freezing up. I would just start panicking and whatever else. It was just something I had to overcome. Now, back then, 
you know, I wanted to go to this nightclub and I decided to do it alone. And my typical wear at the time were black jeans with, uh, you know, black boots on. And, and they weren't cowboy boots. They were kind of like a, some, you know, kind of a cool looking whatever had chains on it and stuff like that. That was very much my style back then. A white shirt and kind of a uh, it was a deeper blue than this was, I think, what I was wearing that night. It was a button up shirt. And, you know, I looked a lot better back then, I guess you could say. Um, I don't think I had long hair at the time, but I did at one point have long hair down to about my mid back and it was all the same length. So it was the same length in the front, but at the time I think I had shorter hair, very similar to what it is now, but it didn't, it wasn't not balding. So I went to this club called bell bottoms. And despite the fact that it was winter and around, you know, Christmas time or so, I was not wearing a coat. I just thought I'd wear this because, you know, when you get out of your car and has a heater on, you go inside of a place, it's going to just overwhelm you with heat you know, because of all the bodies. And I don't really think I was going to be outside very long. So I got into this club, walked right in, saw that the dance floor was pretty much square on the bottom, maybe about 20 feet, 25 feet square. And around the entire thing was a hand was handrails. And there was only a couple entrances from a couple of different areas of it. And one of them were right up near the front, the front. Let's just say that this is the front door. And when you entered, you could walk maybe a few feet, eight, 10 feet. And then there was a stairwell that went up. There was a stairwell on this side too. that kind of went to an, a little platform there that kind of overlooked the dance floor about, you know, six feet or so above. And then the stairwells went off this way. Up on this side was the, was the DJ booth. And then around the entire outside, there was a perimeter area where you could look down onto the dance floor and it was kind of open in the middle. And, and I found myself perched about where you are looking at me right now, looking, you know, from that perspective, I was between a whole bunch of different speakers and looking over the dance floor. And I thought that was a great place. Just kind of play a bird, look out over the dance floor. And I was centered in the music and it sounded about as good as possible. Now, this club is also one that is probably the only club I could ever think that I've ever heard a 15 minute version of Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. And that was the song that was playing when I went in and it was still playing quite a few minutes later. I'm like, come on, dude, beat mix or do something. I wanted to hear, you know, some some combinations of music. And there was very few songs he played in the maybe half an hour to 45 minutes I was there. And looking back at it, I don't know why he had such long versions, but the people on the dance floor didn't seem to mind. Sorry about the plosives. Now, I was standing pretty much there the entire night. And I was only there, like I said, about 30 to 45 minutes. And here's why I looked out over the dance floor and I was looking to just kind of sightsee and listen to the music. But my eyes, as I was scrolling across everybody, they fell upon this one girl and I thought she was really cute. She just seemed to just light up. She had natural features, didn't kill it with the makeup, was wearing not stuff, trying to just pull your eye or whatever. She looked like a girl next door, but she did not have any kind of a hard appearance to her. Like she was trying to just put on a face or whatever. She was just naturally looking like a girl just having fun listening to the music and she was not interacting with anybody. She wasn't dancing next to a girl or whatever with guys or anything. She was just by herself. And I kind of spotted her early and then I would wander my eyes away and then I would go back and I would just happen to, to have my eyes fall on her again. And she never seemed to really interact with anybody. I'm not a drinker. I've never drank and she wasn't either. She was one of the few people that was not holding a drink or anything like that. She was just you know, eyes closed, listening to music and sometimes, you know, singing out, you know, anyway, I kind of, you know, I, as I was looking out there, I kind of saw her a couple of times and was thinking, Hmm. And then I would start to get those butterflies because I, as I mentioned, I was not ready to move on. I was kind of nervous. I was like, no, 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 no. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. And I get nervous and I was like, okay, get back in the music. So I'm back in the music now. Okay, cool. Everything is world is, is okay in the world again. I'm going to be fine. So I continued to kind of silently, you know, when I say silently, I mean, my mind was not working at all. I was just enjoying the music and looking out of the dance floor. And at one point, this confetti cannon went off and it blasted these chunks of confetti that are maybe about half an inch by about two inches long. And they flew all over the place. And just, I was like, you know, it was right as the music built to a peak and then went like this. And this is about half an hour after I was there. And I'm standing up there. And just kind of looking over the dance floor, loving every bit of this, just watching the, the whole show and everybody going crazy. And when it was done, I kind of look, you know, looked over and I was a DJ at the time. So I was like, wait a minute, I wonder what's in these confetti, this confetti. And I looked around, I didn't really see a piece, but then I happened to see one on my shoulder. So I kind of picked it up, looked at it 
and kind of felt it and did this number a bit. And I was like, huh, okay, that's kind of a different material. I guess it's so that way it can hang in the air. And I threw it out over onto the dance floor. That little bitty piece of confetti flew all over the place. And just like Forrest Gump's feather came down to that girl who was looking up at me and she did this and it landed right in the middle of her hand. She closed her hand, didn't say a word, you know, like look at me or anything like that. She was just looking at me. She let out this really pretty smile and then started walking her way and making her way towards the stairs. I panicked. I had no idea what to do. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. So I kind of froze there for a second. And as she worked her way towards those stairs, I was still frozen. They're like, oh, no, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Because I was scared to death. She looked back one time, saw that I was still there, still let out the same smile. I was like, oh, no, this girl is coming to talk to me. As soon as she went up the stairs, she kind of looked at me as she turned and started walking up the other way. I quick as I could ran the opposite direction down the stairs, ran out the front door, ran like crazy to my car, jumped in and hightailed it out of there. Pathetic, I know. But it is also a truthful story. So hopefully that gave you enough to actually listen to there regarding these two microphones and uh, do a decent comparison of them. So in the next episode, we'll unmask them. But for right now, their masked, you know, identities are going to remain my secret. Take care. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.